Welcome students. We're going to take some notes on economic policy and the results of Reaganomics. So this is a look at economics within Reagan's presidency. Let's begin. Terms to keep in mind, we have terms such as revenue, deficit, national debt, and GDP, gross domestic product. The revenue is the money the government receives from taxes. So whenever the government, the IRS, collects taxes, uh, the revenue is um, the money that they receive. As the IRS says, in order to provide for a polite society, taxes must be uh, created. Deficits, the difference between what the government collects in revenue and what they spend in one year. And so we'll have, uh, most presidents will have a deficit and they'll add to the national debt, the running total of all money a country owes. However, uh, we had a couple of presidents such as Andrew Jackson, Bill Clinton, who were able to have zero deficit, which means they balance the budget. They were able to collect the same amount of revenue that they spent. And that's what... Um, uh, most presidents aspire to do, though that's very tricky to do. The national debt, of course, is the running total of all money a country owes. Uh, Ten years ago, it was uh, below $20 um, trillion, but uh, today it's getting closer to $30 trillion uh, national debt. GDP is the gross domestic product that measures the size of the economy. So gross meaning uh, everything uh, before you start to mess with the numbers. Net is smaller. Uh, what you take home, gross is uh, before uh, that. So the gross is the total production, and that is what uh, the, the size of our economy is domestically. Fiscal policy. Fiscal policy is the use of taxation and spending to influence the economy. So a president's fiscal policy will be how do they look at taxes, how do they look at spending, uh, how are they going to use those to influence the economy. All fiscal policies desire growth in the economy, but they accomplish that in different ways. And so we'll have three different uh, economic policies uh, within America. We will have the classic economics, which is the original free market economics, um, but then you will start to see throughout history the Keynesian economics, which is more of a demand side economics. We'll explain that more in a bit. But then you also have the supply side economics known as Reaganomics. Uh, so that's what we're really going to be looking at, the difference between Keynesian economics and Reaganomics. A free market system is where the government does not get involved in the economy. That's a classic capitalist free market system. However, since the Great Depression, the government has gotten involved, and so the question has been, should we be more demand side or more supply side? So keep that in mind, that though Reaganomics claims to be classical economics, um, there is a difference there. So business cycles. Every economy fluctuates. You cannot always have a perfect economy. If you want the same economy um, all the time, then you can go communist. But keep in mind that uh, when you flatline, it's kind of like um, being alive. You have that heartbeat that goes up and goes down um, on the tracker. But when you flatline, um, you're pretty much dead. So if you want a dead, flat, um, perfect in a sense, consistent economy, you can go communist because you're always going to be poor. And everybody's always going to be poor. So there's going to be no comparison there. However, if you want that economy to grow, uh, to have good times, you will also have bad times. Uh, you will have um, comparison that happens where people start to see differences with one another, uh, but that's part of the economic system. These fluctuations are called business cycles. And so if there's an up um, positive, that's a positive business cycle. If there's a negative, goes down, that's a negative business cycle. We used to allow these cycles to work themselves out, and that was the free market system, as I mentioned. Uh, that was designed by um, uh, people like Alexander Hamilton um, during the time period of the creation of our nation. But when the Great Depression happened oh, about 90 years ago, um, 
the people started to demand that the government fix those problems. And so Keynesian economics would be the first uh, solution to these, um, these problems. Uh, but then Reaganomics will um, start to come about about 50 years later. As you see right here, this is the uh, business cycles. You'll have the uh, peak to uh, the trough, which is called a recession. Uh, but then there will be a recovery. But then there will be another recession and then another recovery. About every 10 years or so, we go from peak to trough. Um, but our economy is constantly growing. And the gross domestic product uh, is constantly getting richer and richer. Um, as our debt becomes worse and worse. So um, there's that uh, business cycle that happens there. Uh, example, traffic jam, classic economics um, can be slow, um, like traffic. Um, Keynesian economics tends to step in when there is a accident. So the classical economics uh, can be slow and there can be issues. Uh, but it moves. Uh, but when there is a total halt, uh, such as a fatality of some kind, um, mental picture here, uh, the Keynesian economics um, seeks to step in and fix that problem through intervention. So what is Keynesian economics? Demand side. Demand side economics is a set of actions designed to lower unemployment and increase growth by stimulating demand. So it's focusing on the purchasing power, the demand. Believes government can and should take a role to improve the economy. Again, remember that the Great Depression uh, started to uh, produce this Keynesian economics that America had not seen before. Also called trickle-up economics. Uh, so when FDR created the New Deal programs, he was using Keynesian economics. He was, uh, through the federal government, through deficit spending, uh, he was creating jobs and programs um, and regulations so that the American people had money so that they could put that back into the economy and cause the economy to grow. So this causes a lot of deficits, so it's hopefully short-term deficits. Uh, the picture there, the cartoon at the uh, lower uh, right is pretty good. Uh, Keynesian solution. So increase government spending in the economy. Temporary deficits okay. So as FDR um, and other um, uh, Democratic um, presidents uh, that believe in Keynesian uh, solutions, the deficits are okay for a time. This lowers taxes temporarily to give individuals more money, pass measures to encourage individuals to spend more uh, tax incentives, increase government regulation. Ultimate goal is to get people to buy more, increase demand, which benefits the business, allows them to hire, economy grows. So that's the idea there. Okay, and again, this is um, a solution during catastrophic times. If your economy is always Keynesian, uh, you're going to have some issues because the government is always the one uh, producing and um, uh, part of the growth cycle. Uh, supply side Reaganomic solution would counter this in the 1980s. This is supply side economics, policies designed to stimulate output and lower unemployment by increasing production in the economy. This is called a trickle down theory or Reaganomics. Controversial at first, but it proved to be logical. Uh, the first year, uh, it didn't work, but uh, past the first year, it started to work itself out. Critics initially called this voodoo economics because they didn't believe that this was going to work. That if you um, give money to businesses, that that money would trickle down then to their employees as they work um, and produce more and therefore take home more money and then able to spend that money back. Supply side policy solutions. Tax policy lo believes lower taxes provide greater incentives to work and therefore result in more revenue. And so there's this desire to, instead of increasing taxes so the government can spend that money to improve the economy, instead the government is going to lower taxes 
so that people have the incentive to work more, to grow more. So if you own a business and you're receiving lower taxes, you're going to want to maybe increase your business, increase your growth. Um, the regulatory policy will be smaller as well under Reaganomics, which government allows the economy to function more freely. So if you have less regulations, less taxes, you're going to grow uh, more. Now, keep in mind that this growth um, is a desire to grow the economy as you're growing your own business. This is not, uh, you're not going to be satisfied with what you have, but there's always this growth in mind. That's why Wall Street uh, loves this, um, uh, these supply side economics, because Wall Street is constantly trying to grow, uh, never satisfied with what uh, they have. Whereas uh, socialism or communism is more satisfied with what you have, uh, this uh, supply side economics is all about growing more. Monetary policy believes monetary policy and money supply should remain stable. So there's a desire to not um, inflate or deflate the currency, but to keep that stable money supply so that there is more confidence uh, in this working here. So what about that Laffaire curve? What does that mean? Well, the Laffaire curve, as you can see here, suggests the ideal relationship between the tax rates and the tax revenues. Again, remember that tax revenues is what is taken in, tax rates, um, what is uh, being taxed uh, per your income. Increase taxes, increase revenue, but only to a certain point. So for, from um, uh, maybe 20% uh, to 50% uh, taxes are going to increase revenue. However, if you get past that 50%, you start being counterproductive. Okay, um, what what you're what how to how to think about this is that um, if you are uh, making $20 an hour and you are taxed 10%. Okay, that'll be $2 uh, per hour that you are being taxed. However, if you lower that to, let's say, 5% instead of 10%, but the person is making $100 per hour, um, then it's going to be $5 that is going to be taxed instead of that $2. So that's where that Laffer curve starts to play a point that there's a certain um, percentage that if you keep taxing the rich so much, they're going to become less productive and uh, have less incentives uh, to create products and therefore be, be taxed. So there's this equilibrium, this balance that exists, so to speak. Problems, uh, there's no magic bullet. So Reaganomics, Keynesian economics, there's no perfect solution. Economic conditions always vary and circumstances change. And that's why I will always say that um, American history going every four to 12 years between Republican and Democratic presidents is actually part of our system. Um, though we love to champion Republicans or champion Democrats and be tribal and stick to our sides, um, really what happens in America is that there's a sense of balance. There is no one party that has all the solutions. There's no one party that controls everything. Um, countries like Mexico have one party and we see where their economy has gone. And so the beauty in America is that we have different parties during different um, uh, downturns and upturns of our economic system. Keynesian, in a bad economy, most people will not spe spend extra money in the economy but are likely to save and pay bills. Supply side, we don't always know the right point in which to cut taxes. May have unexpected expenses. So there's there's issues with, with both systems here, right? Um, so understanding that uh, both systems are not perfect, but both systems kind of ebb and flow and um, tend to work themselves out. It would be great if the government uh, was not needed and uh, the economy uh, just worked well and that we had a free market economy and that uh, business owners respected their employees and that uh, there was a fair wage. Uh, but unfortunately, we don't live in a perfect society. Um, because of sin, people start to... 
um, rip each other off and exploit each other. And so Keynesian and supply side economics would seek to use the government to interfere, however, in differing ways. Keynesian focuses on the purchaser, the people, whereas supply side focuses on the businesses and the business owners. That's why typically Republicans are business owners and people of that nature, whereas in Keynesian are typically more laborers and such. Reagan economics. So the economy he inherited, inflation was at 13.5%. Mortgage interest rates were at 20%. That is a very high uh, percentage there for buying a house. Um, not a good uh, mortgage interest rate. Uh, unemployment rate was at 7.65%. Uh, the misery index, which is a combination of inflation and unemployment, was at 21, uh, almost 22%, all much higher than we would like. So Reagan inherited a very bad economy. Uh, after the 1970s, there was that stagflation, there was the issues with OPEC and uh, oil and housing market was uh, ridiculous. And so how would Reaganomics work itself out? Well, he lowers taxes. That's the first thing. He also stops inflation, strict monetary uh, policy, um, so that our money is um, worth uh, the same from... Um, one generation to the next. Uh, cut non-defense domestic spending. So a lot of those um, uh, domestic spending uh, that would help out homeless uh, people and 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 other um, uh, things, uh, he would cut so that he could increase military spending due to the Cold War. Now a lot of people will attack Reagan as not caring about people and this and that, um, which he has his critics. Uh, however, his idea was to grow the economy so that everybody would prosper. And so it's not uh, totally fair to um, just blast him on simply cutting domestic spending. However, um, there would be issues there. So cut back on government regulation as well. That is the whole idea. And so Republicans today that talk about the Reagan era, they're all about cutting government regulation so that the economy has more opportunity to thrive for everyone. However, the unfortunate thing with that is that uh, regulations uh, to a certain point have their place uh, to make sure that people are treating each other fairly. Reagan's Economic Legislation First Tax Act, signed in 1981, 25% across the board tax cut uh, that made um, a lot of people happy. Immediate result, lower tax revenue, increased deficits, uh, but then there was a recession that hit because there was some fear here that uh, this wasn't going to work, that the, the government wasn't going to be able to collect the taxes that it needed. Uh, but after one year, the economy recovered and we began one of the largest, longest periods of economic expansion in history. In 1986, cut taxes further, simplify the tax code, reduce uh, loopholes within uh, taxes. Um, and, and that's what we're constantly uh, advocating for as, as as people is that we have a better tax code that we don't uh, allow the rich to simply get out of paying taxes but that they pay their fair share of taxes um, like everybody else and so reducing those loopholes was very important. Uh, results tax revenues increased overall from 1980 to 1990 did fall as was mentioned from 81 to 82 that recession there the GDP growth would go from $6.49 trillion in 1980 to $8.89 trillion in 1988. So that gross domestic product average, 3.2% uh, a year. Overall economy grew by almost one-third. So even though Reagan is adding to deficits, even though he's collecting less percentage of taxes, he's actually uh, collecting more taxes because the government, or sorry, the economy is able to grow, okay? So that's like the whole situation with if you're making $20 an hour and you're taxed 10%, uh, that's going to be $2. Whereas if you're taxed only 5%, and let's say that that grows your um, uh, pay to $100 uh, an hour, then you're actually paying 
um, ten dollars, um, or sorry, five dollars instead of that um, two dollars. And so, uh, you have to look at not just percentage of taxes, but um, what that does to the gross domestic product. Medium household income is going to rise uh, $4,000 over eight years. The wealthy benefited most, but it was good for everybody. And so there will be this um, uh, gap that uh, increases between the rich and the poor. However, everybody increases um, or benefits from this. Unemployment rate, 7.6% at inauguration, peaked to 9.7%, again, because of that recession, but then it would fall to 5.5% by the end he left office. So that eight years, he left the economy better than when he um, first uh, took the economy. Uh, as we see right here, again, uh, looking at uh, the pre-Reagan, um, the poor was, was very poor. Uh, but during the rain years, the poor would be lifted up uh, quite a bit. And so if you simply measure uh, the blue portion um, or even the second uh, quintile, uh, you look at how everybody increased during the rain years. Now, if you're trying to compare yourself to other people, let's say the poorest to the richest, you will see that there was a um, increase in the uh, gap between rich and poor. OK, um, so when you're comparing with other people, communism, socialism looks like a good answer because you want to um, uh, be treated the same as everybody. You want the same economy as everybody. However, uh, that keeps everybody poor. OK, um, but if you want to grow the economy, there is going to be uh, a rich a rich class and a poor class. There is going to be employers and employees. Um, now, that shouldn't be because of gender or because of race. Uh, those are not uh, issues, um, though they are issues in history, which is unfortunate. And we need to see how to rectify those. But um, you need to see how the uh, poor is lifted up when the rich is able to lift up as well. And so there's kind of this uh, harmony that happens. Instead of us trying to uh, see each other as enemies, we need to work together and to look at how can we respect each other and grow the economy. Unemployment rate, uh, 16 years of age and older. As you can see right here, uh, during Reagan's first years here, it would uh, skyrocket, but then it would start to decrease and he would leave the unemployment rate a lot lower than when he uh, had come into office. So continue results, interest rates fell by about half. Personal savings rate decreased as well. One of the longest consecutive economic expansions in history, 92 months long. Huge budget deficits, unable to balance the budget and accomplish other goals at the same time. And that's mainly because of defense spending spiked. Why? Because of the Cold War strategy. Uh, the idea of Reagan was to not only help out the economy with Reaganomics, but also to uh, defeat the Russians during the Cold War. And so he was, in a sense, trying to have his cake and eat it, too. The national debt would double over eight years. And so... Um, it is true, and Reagan's critics uh, rightly so criticize him for these huge deficits. However, at the same time, our gross domestic product does increase tremendously. So you have to look at the whole picture to really get uh, the, the issues here. Uh, national debt as percent of GDP. So as you look at uh, presidents, it's not fair just simply to look at the debt. You have to look at the debt and GDP. Uh, the, the debt to the GDP ratio, 100% means that they are equal influencers. So if you have 100% um, national debt to GDP, um, that's uh, that means that they're equal influencers. That's where we were going into 2016. Uh, before then, um, we were at a better place. But that uh, most recent recession, uh, the Great Depression, uh, during the 1930s and the Great Recession during the 2010s, both were situations where our national debt increased because of the um, downturn of gross domestic product. Um, 
in our economy. So we're starting to see some reversals in that trend. Thank you for taking these notes.